Hi Nitya. Good morning. Hi Tati. Good evening. Hi Nitya. All right. So let's get started for today. Um so today this is a very quick topic that we can discuss quickly today but it's very important to understand the concept um that's why i put like only one topic for today which is none other than uh, inter thread communications okay so when i say inter thread communication which is nothing but um how threads are talking to each other so we are in date 41 and this is agenda for today and uh, one more thing with ya uh, i have uploaded all the videos recorded videos in youtube over the last weekend and um, you have access to this sheet right the google sheet yeah yes i have access okay perfect so if you see recorded videos url the column g you see all the list of okay. device if you directly click on here you will go and directly get the particular day okay you can go on okay. so till till last video i have uploaded everything okay okay so every day's video i will upload based on once it is done then i will upload it okay, okay all right today, yeah today we are in day 41 where we are going to talk about internet communications so um i hope like you have uh, watched all the previous topics right learn about all the previous topics right so now uh, when we talk about internet communication it's nothing but how threads are communicate each other okay so let's go by the slide okay so we will see what is internet communication and why do we need that and how to achieve that okay these are three things we are going to look at so whenever i say internet communication so what does it mean so communication between the threads right inter thread right so which means like threads are communicate each other so that's nothing but like internet communications right so why do we need that right why each thread has to talk to each other because in order to avoid the checking time right let's say if one thread is in waiting state and another thread is keep on doing something and if the thread is not communicating saying you know hey you can move forward then it means like it will keep on checking whether should i still wait or whether should whether should i still wait right in order to avoid the checking time we have to make sure that the threads are communicate each other so which of course is going to increase the performance right if you avoid the waiting time or checking time which means the performance is going to get increase right and how to do it how to achieve inter thread communication with the help of three methods wait notify and notify all okay this is the basic topic we are going to talk about today so before i start on this one as always i would like to start by one giving a real time practical example especially with related to multiple multi threading so okay let's say um you are in a place where you have some courier office okay and let's say you are uh, placing an order in amazon and that order is let's say some iphone or something okay just an example i'm just taking this is amazon okay and then let's say you are here right so you are placing an order and then um, let's say the, op- the the order which you want it is nothing but iphone nothing but an object let's assume i for you order okay so now when you place an order in amazon right you are directly placing an order in amazon and it has to deliver to you right so through some courier office so amazon will use some courier platform which is nothing but like to deliver the object to you right the end user so here what happens let's say you place an order and you are calling them first the courier office to check hey whether uh, did you get any parcel for me then courier guy office guy say you know you don't have any courier right again he is calling the second time then he is saying no third time no fourth time no so which means like he is keep on checking the person is keep on checking right whether did i receive any parcel for me right so here this one case okay this is one part where you are checking the courier office every time whenever you get parcel or not then what you do at one point of time you are telling this courier office saying you know hey i cannot wait for uh, longer anymore so can you take my number and whenever you see any courier um, any any parcel comes to me could you please call me and let me know okay 
so which means you are sharing your mobile number and this guy is checking it out of it and once amazon gives the iphone then what happens so you are sharing your mobile number and let's say amazon gives it then this courier office guy calls you back right so say that you know you have a courier we will come and deliver it or you can come and pick it up whatever it is this exactly i am going to this exact scenario i am going to replicate with respect to multi threading what i am going to do here is so assume that this is nothing but jvm here who is the controller here who is the controller the courier office guy right which is nothing but jvm jvm is the controller of all the multi threads right threads and let's say you have one thread here you have one thread okay and another thread okay and let's say you have an object here so what happens here in this case one thread this thread tries to access this object and let's say this object is still not available because this thread has to be give this object okay so in this case jvm says this object is still not able to available to use so then what this thread will do he has to go to waiting state isn't it he has to go to waiting state he has to go to waiting state so how it can be achieved is nothing but like we will see the program but the conceptually you have to think relate this one so you have to keep on calling them and you have to wait 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 right in this case of courier office here also this thread is keep on checking hey I, can i access this object jvm says no you have to wait again the same thread is asking jvm can i access the object jvm says no you have to wait so what happens here then they keep on waiting right without knowing when they will get uh, time to access this object so at one point of time what happens this thread is in more than in waiting state which is drastically reducing the performance so if this is the situation they these two threads are not communicate each other right which means like this guy doesn't know when this thread is going to get place this uh, allow the lock for this particular object right so what happens here if these two threads are communicate each other through this jvm then he don't need to wait rather he can do some other work right you don't need to wait you can go and do some other work and let's say you get some message or notification then you can go and pick up the courier office uh, parcel in your courier office right similarly if this guy is in waiting state and let's say this guy can do some other thing and he can come and once this particular object or the particular thread let's say this thread is t2 and this is t1 okay once this thread is placing an object here in jvm then this thread has to tell notify this thread has to call notify or notify all i will tell you the difference the last just know that like we have this thread has to call either notify or notify all these are two methods he has to call he has to call and this guy has to call wait method saying that i am going to wait waiting state okay is it clear nitya now let me go to the program and show you what does it mean so this is what exactly it means so thread t1 is in waiting state by calling the uh, this object's waiting uh, wait method and uh, here amazon which is nothing but a thread t2 this guy is going to call notify method so that like this is guy is going to notify who is in waiting state he is going to wake up okay that's logic so we will see how the program works here so let's say you have a code here and let's say you have a class which is nothing but amazon thread which section thread where you have run method where you have uh, write this program and then in your main class you are writing a program where you are creating a object of uh, threaded class nothing but amazon thread at equal to new amazon thread of and then you are starting thread as usual right at dot start so here at this line like there will be only one main thread and here it will be have two threads one is main thread other one is this thread at right now what you are doing here is assume that the thread scheduler is um, there are two chances right so one is either the thread at can run this job nothing but run method or the main method can execute 
I mean, the remaining code of the piece of code can be executed by main thread. Assume that thread scheduler is allowing main thread to execute. Okay, which means comes line number here, right? So if this is taking precedence, then what happens is synchronized of AT. We know that what do you mean by synchronized? In our previous video, we have learned, right? In order to make synchronization achieved, then we have to use synchronized keyword, right? And it is at the block level, right? So synchronized of AT. AT is nothing but object. Object of what? This class. So which means this curly braces, what are the line here? This can be accessed by this main thread one and if and only if the main thread has an object a lock of this object AT. Right? One and only if and only if if the main thread is having an object lock of this object AT, only then main thread can able to go and execute this piece of code. Right now, this object is not locked by anyone, right? This object lock is available at JVM, right? So JVM gives the lock to main thread and main thread happily go inside and he will go and execute this line i am waiting and then main thread is calling at dot wait you see here this line of code is executed by whom main thread right so main thread is calling at dot wait so which means main thread is something but the person who applies an order here he is calling wait method and then he is going to waiting state that's all he will do something else on different ways right but with respect to this object he is not doing anything right so at dot wait means he is going to waiting state and then he will release the key. Whatever the lock he got it, he will release the lock. So if I think about a different way, let's say this guy is calling a courier office and uh, asking for iPhone, right? So let's say if um, that particular call he makes to a courier office is related to this iPhone object. And if this person is not hang up the phone, which means he's keep on waiting in the phone itself, then he won't get a call from Amazon, right? Saying that, you know, there is a order you received here. So in that case, what he has to do? He has to hang up and he can do some other work, right? Only then he can able to get a call and then he can able to receive it saying, okay, it is there. And then he can call back and say, you know, you have a parcel, right? Similarly, here he go for a waiting state, which means he will, the main thread, when I say he here, main thread is going to waiting state and then he will release a lock. Of this particular object at right the moment he calls at dot wait he will go to waiting state and release the lock that's all now since the lock is available at jvm so what it will do thread scroll will look for okay hey we have another thread called at he also wants to start this particular thing so since the lock is available because here also you see here he can go to run method right but here you have synchronized of this this is nothing but referring to the current class current object current object is nothing but amazon thread right this run method is inside amazon thread class so what happens now when AT thread is coming here and try to execute, it needs a lock, right? Because of synchronized of this. So this means synchronized of this particular object. So this AT thread needs a lock of um, this particular thread, uh, this class object, only then it can able to go and execute. So right now, AT dot wait means now the lock is available of this object lock. So now this thread AT is happily go and get the lock and then is going to call this i mean execute this method right like synchronize of this and then this dot notify so here who is calling this uh this dot notify thread 80 right the child child thread not 80 that like thread even zero right so the thread even zero the child thread is going to call this dot notify this dot notify means the object 80 right this is first always the current object current object is nothing but wherever this code is running the class is the current object right so this is nothing but 80 so at dot notify basically internally it is saying like at dot notify right this dot notify is nothing but at dot notify so what happens here is whenever the thread iphone zero calls this dot notify whenever he calls notify which means whatever the thread is waiting for this object those threads are getting notified which means like you know the thread iphone zero is waking up saying you know hey i'm ready you can go ahead like that okay and then you will see okay then this thread will execute start from here and then SOP dot uh, get notified. That's how it works. So let me start write a program so that you will understand maybe in better way. Uh, let me create a quick class. I would like to say interthread communication demo. Okay, here you go. So here I'm going to say class Amazon thread options thread class right then 
I have to define the job of the thread, right? Job of the thread is nothing but public void run method, isn't it? And now here I'm simply saying this out. Thread entered here is I just want to print what is the thread, current thread here, right? Thread dot current thread dot get name okay and then i will add one more statement saying that what are the current leaving here thread leaving here okay now we are going to write a job here right so whenever i say job before i go here so first of all we need to create a threaded class right sorry uh, create an object of a threads and then we have to call right so how i can create an object of a threaded class Amazon thread, let's say 81 is equal to new Amazon thread off. Isn't it? So now we have created this one, then 81 dot start. It is nothing but now the thread has been started. Right? So now here is the logic what I want to write here. I will also print the same thing here. and i want to have some other difference here so inside main method thread enter here is so you will see the difference right which line of code is executed from where okay so now here i'm going to make a synchronized logic right so which means like synchronized of Synchronized of what? So here I want to make synchronized of this 81, right? Because I want to first obtain a lock of this particular object 81, right? So which means 81. Okay. If I say synchronized of 81, then here I'm simply saying some sister statement I will say inside the sync block then i am going to say so here on the line number 13 let's say the main thread is getting a lock of thread uh, object 81 right which means now main thread can happily go and execute this piece of code right this block of synchronous block so assuming that main thread already got a lock of this object 81 and it is going and inside here and then say you know i am going to wait so how main thread is going to wait main thread is going to execute this piece of code right so which means main thread is calling wait method of this object so 81 dot 81 dot wait method isn't it does it make sense 81 dot wait method so since we are calling wait method we have to handle the exception of in interrupted exception right because waiting thread can be interrupted right so he is going to wait and what i can do here i will put a method oh, sorry inside a sick block dot notification going to wait nithya stop me if you don't understand i will come again again okay so here what happens main thread is going to execute this piece of code and his main thread is going to be in waiting state until this particular object is getting notification this main thread will be in waiting state right so now here we have to uh, notify them right whatever the threads are waiting so who is going to wait here main thread is going to wait for which object this object right and here who is going to execute this particular thread thread type in zero right so then Synchronous of so if the thread even zero got a lock of this particular method sorry object 81 so here i don't need to create object of amazon thread because if i simply say this means referring to the current object then whoever is waiting for this object they should get notified so who is going to wait of this particular object 80 main thread so now main thread is going to get notified let me go and underscore on okay so what happened 
thread entered here is thread hyphen zero. Thread entered here is so it actually executed this piece of code first. Sorry, this execute it executed this piece of code first, right? And what happens? It simply calls notify, but no one is there in waiting set, so it didn't do anything, right? Let me run it again. I want to see the place. Yeah, here you go, right? I want to see this scenario where main thread is getting executed first. So now when I run the second time, right? So thread schedule is allowing main thread to execute first time. So what happened? So inside main thread, main method, thread entered here is nothing but main thread. So line number 11 has been executed by main thread. That is what I want to show it here. And then line number 13 to 21 is also executed by, see this piece of entire piece of code from line number 11 to 21 is executed by main thread, right? So we can see the main here and inside the sync block going to wait and thread entered. See, if you see here, the, the moment it goes to waiting state, right? Going to wait, then at one dot wait. So when the main thread calls at one dot wait, so what happens? Main thread went to waiting state and it released the lock. Now thread schedule is having a lock and thread schedule is allowing this thread, thread event zero to execute this job, right? And that is the reason before we see this line of uh, uh, out statement, you see this one. Thread entered here is thread event zero. Thread leaving here is thread event zero. So which means it entered here and then left here. So since it is notified, then you will see automatically this line saying, you know, main thread got notified and then leaving the main method something but main thread. That's all. Is it clear, Nithya? Uh, yes, perfect. Okay, so this is how uh, two threads are communicating each other with the help of wait method and notify method. So there is another method called notify all. So notify and notify all are same, but the difference is that notify means it will notify the only one thread which is waiting. So in this case, here we have only one thread which is nothing but main thread is waiting and then you are notifying that particular thread. Assume that in the real case scenario, you will have n number of threads, right? And when you don't know how many threads you are dealing with. So ideally you have to do notify all so that whatever the threads are waiting on this particular object, AT1, then all the threads are getting notified, which means it is going to wake up all the threads one by one. Okay. So that order we can't predict which thread will get executed. We don't, we can't predict because again, thread scheduler will take a call on that. But we should know that whenever we, it is always best to use notify all, even though it is a one thread or multi threads, you always go for notify all. Okay. So let's say in this scenario, I have used only notify. So I will ask you to write a program or just modify the same program to make it notify all. It is very simple. I will give you hints. So right now, if you see, uh, at one dot wait is called by only main thread here, right? Similarly, you can create another thread. Let's say thread t equal to new thread of and then t dot start. So another thread also you can start it. And that thread also in the job of a thread also you can call this uh, at one dot wait. So what happens there if you use that way? Whenever that thread is going to be in waiting state, whenever this guy says notify all, then both the threads are getting notified. Isn't it? So you can simply change the program and then see how it goes. So that you will have a hands-on experience on notify all. Okay, and if you won't get that logic, then let me know. I will guide you in the next class. But I want you to be in a hands on that so that you will see what is going on. Okay, so this is all about like the waiting state and notify, notify all. And the last piece, what I'm trying to say here is we have a separate video where we are going to explain about what are the different states of a particular thread in Java, or we can say lifecycle of a thread. But here, just a summary I'm going to share you, share with you. So whenever we say Amazon thread 80 equal to new Amazon thread of with the help of new keyword, we are going to instantiate a thread, right? So whenever you use new keyword, AT equal to new keyword of, right? New Amazon thread of, right? So at the time, the state of a thread is nothing but new. Okay, the moment you say AT dot start, so what happens? The state of the thread has been changed from new to a runnable or ready. It will be in ready state, or you can say it is in runnable state. The moment thread scheduler allocates the process, because thread scheduler is the one who is going to allocate which thread has to start, right? which means like who has to execute. So once it allocates the memory and other process to execute the particular thread, so what happens here is the state of the thread is going to be in running state. Okay. So whenever the thread is in running state, which is nothing but it is going to execute the particular run method or job of a thread, right? So whenever it runs the run method, once the run method completes, 
the line of execution if run method completes then the thread uh, the state of the thread goes to dead state so whenever you complete your job of a thread then the thread will go to dead state okay so let's say the thread is running state and you are calling wait method so in this case here uh, this line right line number here after synchronize here this is running by main thread right so main thread is calling 80.wait main thread is calling 80.wait so whenever main thread calls 80.wait so main thread will go to waiting state right that's what i said right so here what happens till this line the main thread is in running state right now whenever it calls wait of a particular object then the particular thread will go to waiting state and whenever that particular thread get notified whether it's notify or notify all then whenever that particular thread gets notified which is nothing but someone is waking up it won't directly go to runnable state or ready state what will happen is it will go to notify uh, sorry another waiting state the reason is that even though it is getting notified it has to get the lock right it has to get the lock in order to access it so it will go to another waiting state and if a waiting thread get the lock only if the main thread gets a lock only then it can go and execute this piece of code of like line numbers this one get notified which is nothing but then it will go to ready state and then once uh, uh, thread scroll allocates a process it will call it will call the line number like get notified got notified and that will be in running state and then once it is this particular piece of code is completed it will go to dead state so this is the life cycle of a particular uh, scenario which we have discussed in our program related to uh, inter thread communication but i have i think we have one more scenario i mean video where we are going to uh, talk about um, thread states and life cycle in detail okay so you will get more clarity about it but uh, just try to relate what i was explaining here and see whether you understand it or not so this is a base for the next uh, class which is something but like life cycles and state when we discuss in detail so this is a base one so if you don't get a clarity about uh, any of this uh, logic then let me know i will clarify in the next class okay so basically this is the code which we have start uh, writing it here so you have uh, two threads here and you are calling a synchronous of object at and then you are calling wait method right and then in this one you are calling notify method so if you call notify all here and if you have more than one thread let's say here at is nothing but main thread right so main thread is waiting of this object similarly you can get another thread and that thread can also call at dot wait then if you use notify all you will see both the methods are, both the threads are getting notified and you can write the try the try out the logic and let me know the hands on okay so this is a summary of today's class and tomorrow um we are going to talk about yeah exactly the same right so thread states and life cycle so where we are going to explain in detail about what are different states of a thread and uh, how a thread enters into each state and what level okay and also we have uh, enhancements such we are going to start so by this week we will complete all the multi threading and the next week we'll start with uh, java 1.8 features interesting concepts coming coming up okay any questions nitya you have you think right now or you can hello karthik okay write your yeah. how it goes so that i will okay uh, sure i will do okay okay nitya then we'll talk tomorrow then yeah thanks for time bye okay karthik thanks karthik bye for like